Okay, now we're finishing off the unit three test review uh, by doing some of these graph problems. Um, so let's see here. Uh, identify the vertical asymptotes, x-intercepts, and horizontal asymptotes of each, then sketch the graph showing points um, in each interval. So this prob these problems are um, perfect examples of why you want to get a graphing calculator, because when you have a graphing calculator, it's really, really easy, okay? Um, I'll show you how to do it uh, on a graphing calculator and then also get some of the same answers on one of these scientific calculators. Uh, but to fully illustrate what's going on, it's really helpful to have the graphing calculator. But, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll show you how to find the stuff anyways. Um, so let's see here. Identify the vertical asymptotes, x-intercepts, and horizontal asymptotes of each. So, uh, you know, I, I showed my class just how to find these pretty easily. The x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes. So for x-intercepts, what you do is you take the top part, and you set it equal to zero. Uh, for the y-intercepts, you just plug in zero for all the x values and find the coordinate. And for the vertical asymptotes, you set the bottom part equal to zero. And then for the horizontal asymptotes, you need to use the table. So uh, we'll go through each of those real quick. So for x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes, you need to find where it equals zero. So what you want to do is factor this without a doubt. Uh, so the top part of it factors. Numbers that multiply together to be four, add together to be five. That's four and one, so this becomes x plus 4, x plus 1. The bottom part, uh, I can factor out a 3 from this, so it becomes 3 times parentheses x squared minus 4. And this is a difference of squares problem, so it becomes 3 times, and that'd be x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so, um, I, I mean, I know that we taught, we taught you guys about holes, so make sure that you check for those holes or removable asymptotes. Like, you know, if you see a factor in the top or the bottom that cancels, that's the location of the x value where you have a hole. Uh, we're gonna have that for number 15 in a little bit. Um, but you know, just focus on this stuff mostly, like, cause that's where the majority of the points come from. And that's how your graph can kind of, you know, uh, uh, sort of start to show, uh, you know, aside from just using your calculator. So for, for the x-intercepts, take the top part, set it equal to zero. So just the top equation, that's it. Just the top stuff, x plus four, x plus one, set it equal to zero, and solve it, okay? So that's how you get the x-intercepts. For the vertical asymptotes, you take the bottom part and set it equal to zero. So three times x plus two times x minus two equals zero. That will find your vertical asymptotes. For the y-intercept, you plug in x uh, is zero, and then find what coordinate that you get. Okay, when you plug in zero. So your x is zero, your y is something, and we'll find out what that is in a second. Okay, so for the x-intercepts, set each of these factors equal to zero and solve for x. So if x plus four equals zero, x must be equal to negative four. If x plus one equals zero, x must be equal to negative one. So that gives me two x-intercepts. One is gonna be at negative four, zero. The other one's gonna be at negative one, zero. So graph those two points on here. Negative one zero is right here. Negative four zero is right here. All right, now for my y-intercept, I'm gonna plug in zero. So if I plug in zero, it doesn't matter if I use this equation or this equation, but I need to plug in zero for every single x. I'm gonna plug it into my original expression just because it's a little bit easier. So let's see what we get. Zero squared plus five times zero plus four all over three times zero squared minus 12. So we have 0 plus 0 plus 4, which is just 4, and then 0 minus 12, which is negative 12. And then if I reduce that fraction, I get uh, negative 1 over 3, because 4 and 12 are both divisible by 4. So when I plugged in 0, I got negative 1 third. So there's another coordinate that I can graph. Go over 0 and then down a third. So it's somewhere in between 0 and negative 1. I'm just going to guess that it's like right over there. Now let's put together our vertical asymptotes. So for the vertical asymptotes, take each of your factors and then set them equal to zero and solve for x. So if x plus two equals zero, that means that x is equal to negative two. Then if x minus two equals zero, that means that x is equal to positive two. So this gives you the equations. These are the vertical asymptotes of vertical lines. They pass through the x values on the x-axis, so it's a vertical line, it's dotted, and one of them goes through two, that's this one, and then through negative two, we find negative two on the x-axis, and draw a little dotted line through there as well. There we go. 
Okay, uh, now we find the horizontal asymptotes. For the horizontal asymptotes, it's just a table, and you compare the degree, and you remember the degree from, uh, I believe it was unit, geez, one, where we're just, uh, you know, find the biggest power on, on you know, the, the expression that you have. You're comparing the top degree and the bottom degree. So there are three instances, that, uh, three situations that can happen. The top degree can be bigger than the bottom degree, the top can, degree can be equal to the bottom degree, and the top degree can be smaller than the bottom degree. If the top degree is bigger than the bottom degree, there is no horizontal asymptote at all. If the top degree is equal to the bottom degree, then you just compare their lead coefficients. You just make a, a fraction out of those and then set that equal to y. That's the horizontal line equation. And then if the top degree is smaller than the bottom degree, then that means that it's automatically your y value is equal to zero. So your horizontal line just cuts through the x-axis. Let's see what happens with these ones. So the degree in the top from the original equation, the biggest power is 2. And then same thing for the bottom equation, the biggest power is 2. So since the degrees are the same, then that means that we need to compare their coefficients. So we do get a horizontal asymptote. And if the lead coefficient on the top is 1, the lead coefficient on the bottom is 3, then that means that we get 1 over 3 for our horizontal line. So we draw a horizontal line through 1 third. 1 third is somewhere between 0 and 1. We don't have to be you know, exactly precise, but just make sure that it's somewhere in between those two to kind of get an idea of where your graph's going to go. So the asymptote lines that we graph out sort of work as barriers for the, um, for the intercepts, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, not the intercepts, for the graph. It works like walls and then also kind of like ceilings, so to speak. So when we graph it out on our calculators, it's really obvious as to where our graph is going to go. The graphs on the left and the right are always going to follow right along the asymptote. So it's going to go like this, like make kind of a J shape, or this one's going to make kind of like a 7 shape over here. This one's going to make sort of like an L. This one's going to make sort of like a, a lowercase r shape. So it's going to be one of those options up there. Let's see what happens with our graph on our calculator. And then I'll also show you how to find those values without a graphing calculator. So first with the graphing calculator, you type it in. Make sure to put the original expression and put the top part in parentheses and the bottom part in parentheses. So parentheses x squared. So x squared plus 5x plus 4. And then divide that by the bottom equation, which is 3x, oops, 3x squared minus 12. Then hit graph, and here's how your graph is going to look. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how the rest of this graph is going to appear, um, you know, with our calculators and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you notice, like, this part of the graph follows that 7 shape that I was talking about. It's going to follow the horizontal asymptote. It's going to pass through this point that we have, and then it's going to go along the horizontal asymptote. When you're graphing these out on your graph, you need to show a couple of points for each of the intervals. It just needs to be, like, in the intervals enough to show how the graph looks. So, like, as long as I have a coordinate over here on the left or on the right in either the top or the bottom regions, then I know how the graph's going to look like. I'd only need one coordinate up here to show that that's going to be that like kind of L shape there. So, you know, I could go to my table, hit second, and then graph. And then just graph a coordinate that's over here. So to follow the X values, you need to be past 2 to get into this region. So plug in like, you know, 3 or 4 or 5, whatever. So 3 is at 1.867, so over 3, and then up 1.6 something, 86 something. So it's like right there. So that means that my graph is going to pass through this point and then just continue on along the asymptote lines right there. Now, the ones in the middle, the horizontal asymptote really don't affect, but the vertical asymptotes always will affect. So all you need to do is just get a couple of coordinates to make it look like this. So, so far I already know that it's going to pass through this point here and then go through here like that and then along the asymptote. So that, that's obvious that that's going to happen. But we don't really know what's going to happen here, if it's going to just keep going straight up or if it's going to go back straight down. So since it's going straight up, I want to get a point that's closer to, like, over here. So I'm going to plug in negative 1.5. And, and you can either use your calculator and plug it in like that, or you can just go to this neat option on your graphing calculator that um, is just value. So you hit second, the blue button. Let me get out of there. So you hit the blue button, second, and then hit trace. And then you just pick the first thing, value. And this allows you to just plug in an x value. So I'm going to plug in negative 1.5 and, and see what that gets me, negative 1.5. Because that's in between my last coordinate that I have 
which is the x-intercept, and then also this vertical asymptote right here. So if I plug it in, I get 0.23 something, so it's gonna be right up above the axis. And since there's no other x-intercepts, it can't go back down, so that means it's just gonna go straight up like that. So what I'd wanna do um, is write down those coordinates that I have. So I have negative 1.5 comma um, 0.238, you know, for that coordinate that I added in. And then I already had that one, so the only one, other one that I added in was that one for three. So I go to my table, and it was three comma 1.867, like right around there. So those are my two points that I need for that. All right, so that's one graph. I noticed that it took me 10 minutes to get through that and explain it all the way through. Uh, so let's kind of try and do this one, um, not not super fast, but you know, uh, to the point where it's a little bit easier to get through, less than 10 minutes mostly. So let's try it out. So we, uh, you know, same rules. We factor this out. So we have two x on the top, and then on the bottom, we can factor out an x from all these. So we get x times parentheses, x squared minus two x minus three. The bottom part factors, so we get two x over x times parentheses. Um, let's see, numbers that multiply together to be negative 3, add together to be 2, that's negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, so we're all factored. Now let's check out the different parts of it. So x-intercepts, y-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. And in this case, we're also going to have a hole in the graph. So let's find the hole as well. Okay, so uh, first off, the... Um, uh, the biggest thing that you need to do is, you know, find the hole first, find the hole in the graph. So you, you cancel out whatever's in the top and the bottom. It, it, it's what happens when you reduce your rational expression. So in this case, we have an X in the top and the bottom, so we cancel those out. And this just simply becomes 2 over uh, X minus 3 times X plus 1. So this tells us that we have a hole. And the way that we have the hole is if we just took the X value and set it equal to 0 or you know, any of these and set them equal to zero, if they were to be reduced, that would be our x value for the whole. So uh, that's going to be zero in this case. So we need to figure out what that's going to be when we plug it in over here. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and look for the other values. Uh, so we're going to use this simplified expression and, you know, this previous one, the one that we started with, to find a couple of these problems here. Okay, so x-intercepts. We set the top part equal to zero, but the top part is two. So it can never be equal to zero. So that means that we actually have none, no x-intercepts at all. Y-intercepts, we plug in 0 for x and see what we get. So let's plug it into this expression over here. And as you know, that's where our hole occurs. So not only is this going to be the y-intercept, but there's going to be a hole that's located at that point. So let's see what happens when we plug in 0 over here. We get 2 over and then 0 minus 3 and 0 plus 1. So that's 2 over negative 3 times 1 or negative 2 thirds. So 0 negative 2 thirds is going to be our the hole in the graph. So let's see where that's going to be. So it's going to be, and it's quite literally just a hole in the graph. So you just put a circle where it should be instead of a coordinate. So that's where our point is going to be right there, that, that circle value is. So that's going to be our y-intercept and also our hole in the graph. Vertical asymptotes. So set the bottom part equal to zero. So x minus three, x plus one equals zero, and then solve it. So this one gives me x equals three. This one gives me x equals negative one. So we draw vertical lines through both of those. So this one's through 3. This one's through negative 1. And then we check for horizontal asymptotes. So, uh, you know, we consult this table that we created on the first problem. Uh, check the degrees on the top and the bottom. The degree in the top here is 1. The degree in the bottom here is 3. So that means that the top is smaller than the bottom, so that means that our horizontal asymptote exists, and it's going to be at y equals 0. So that's just a nice little horizontal line right through the x-axis. And this creates all of the little barriers that we're going to have for our graph. So now we can go on over to our graphing calculator and graph this thing out. So we do the top equation, um, so 2x divided by the bottom equation, which is x to the third... Oops, why did I put that there? There we go. And then minus 2x squared minus 3x. All right, graph it out. So it's going to follow this pattern here. So it's going to go through here, go through here, and then make a little U shape around there. Okay. So um, just get a couple coordinates because the only coordinates that we have are, are holes in the graph, which kind of sucks. So there aren't any x-intercepts, so that actually answers a question over here. This one's going to follow along the asymptote, go through this hole in the graph, 
and then it's not gonna pass through the x-axis, it's just gonna go straight back down. If it were to pass through the x-axis, we would have x-intercepts, which we don't have, so not to worry about it. Uh, the graph on the left, just you know, uh, get a couple coordinates over here, so go to your table, and then let's find some that are to the left of negative one. Here we go, negative 2.4. So negative 2.4 is somewhere right over there. So since it's in this region, it needs to follow along the uh, intercept or the asymptotes. So it's just gonna go like right there. And then we need to find a coordinate over in this region. So let's use four, I guess. So going over to four, coincidentally enough, we have 0.4 again. So 4.4 is gonna be this little uh, L shape that we make with the graph. So our two coordinates are located at negative 2.4 and then also uh, four and 0.4. So that's how we can get all of those coordinates, you know, using our graph. The only thing that like is missing from these calculators that you don't get in a graph calculator is the graph itself. But you can find that table really easily. See, let me show you how to get these coordinates right here from here uh, using one of these. So there's a little table button right over here. So if you press that, you can enter in the function using the X button and the X button is right over here. So I'm just gonna type it in exactly as it's written. So uh, 2x, so parentheses, 2x over, and then the bottom is uh, x to the third power, so x to the power of three, and then minus 2x squared. Wait, did I put x squared on there? I did, didn't I? Yeah, 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 okay, we're good. And then uh, minus 3x, there we go and then hit enter. And then it'll say, where do you wanna start at? So say that you start at zero. So that tells you what X value it starts at. The step tells you how much it goes up by incrementally for each X value. And then um, you just go to okay, hit enter, and you have a table. See, we actually have the same coordinates that uh, the graphing calculator got. So if I scroll down to four, see it's 4.4. .4. So you can get some of those coordinates if you want, like, you know, you can just graph out as many coordinates as you want on, on your graph. It'll be, it'll take a little bit of time, but you know, you can, you can do it pretty easily. Just graph them out and you're good to go. Uh, so, you know, and then we also have like negative 2.4 C. So it's, you can just graph out a bunch of coordinates for it. Uh, yeah, so that's my uh, little hack on these ones. I guess it's not a hack because it's a function. It's not anything crazy, but now you know how to use that if you need it. Okay, so if you need some additional help, make sure you uh, ask your teachers for help. Uh, they're here to help you out. Uh, good luck on your test. That's it. Bye-bye.